Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. For today's video, I wanna review the latest news around the Chevy Blazer EV. They've just released brand new pricing for this vehicle and deliveries for this car have just begun. This is what the car looks like in case you're not familiar. This is a much touted, much rumored car from GM and one that's really built to compete with cars like the Tesla Model Y, the Ford Mustang Mach-E, and really introduce its brand new EV sort of style and how GM is going to be uh, moving into the more affordable EV segments. It's gonna have four trims over time. I'm gonna show you what some of these look like. So it has the 1LT, the 2LT, the RS, and the SS. I have the 1LT, 2LT, and RS here on the screen. I'll show you the SS in a second. The 1LT will start at 45,000. 2LT starts at about 47.5 and the RS starts at 52,000 with various different types of trim and options as usual with this legacy with these legacy automakers. Uh, you can get a, a, some of the trims in front wheel drive, some in rear wheel drive, and also all wheel drive with different sizes of batteries. This is what the SS trim looks like. It starts at 66,000. And of course, with this model, you'll get better performance. You'll have the extended range and really the top of the line options and luxury features, so on and so forth. Right now they're launching three primary trims and I'll review those with you right now on screen. These are gonna be the 2LT all-wheel drive, the RS all-wheel drive, and the RS real wheel drive. Uh, and I can show you the range as well on this chart, 279 for both the 2LT and RS models, uh, miles of range, and 320 for the RS real wheel drive with pricing starting at 56,700, including delivery fees, uh, 60,000 for the RS all-wheel drive, and 62,000 almost for the RS real-wheel drive. Now, it's also important to highlight that these cars are also eligible for the EV tax credit. So you'll get the $7,500 federal EV tax credit this year when you file your taxes next year. And starting in 2024, the $7,500 discount will be part uh, of your, uh, basically the point of sale transaction with any Chevy dealer you go to, where instead of waiting for the end of the year to get your credit, you actually get your monthly lower, uh, your monthly price will be lower to account for that $7,500 credit uh, for the full year, which is obviously great for EV buyers. Now, what I wanna do now is compare this pricing that Chevy has released for the Blazer EV and really put it head to head with the Tesla Model Y. The Tesla Model Y is the best selling EV uh, really in the world with about uh, a run rate of a million units in 2023 and has some of the competitive, most competitive pricing out there for an electric vehicle. And of course, this is the same uh, form factor as the Blazer EV. So it's gonna be very important to see how GM is pricing its products versus really the largest EV maker in the world right now, which is Tesla. Now, from a size perspective, they haven't released the full dimensions around the Blazer EV yet, but I'm gonna guess it's gonna be very similar to the gas car version. It's gonna be about 192 inches long, 77 inches wide, 67 inches uh, tall, whereas the Tesla Model Y is about 187 inches long, 76 inches wide, and 64 inches tall. So the Blazer is gonna be slightly longer by about five to six inches and a couple inches taller as well. So you can see that they're very similar form factor. But what's really interesting and very important to highlight here is that the Chevy Blazer looks like it's only configurable in a five seat format, so two rows, whereas the Model Y has an optional seven seat with three rows. That third row is gonna be tight. <laughs> it's gonna be very tight. It's gonna be something uh, to really put in a pinch or to carry kids to and from sporting events and things like that but the uh, Model Y will offer a third row option where it doesn't look like the Blazer EV will, at least uh, in, the, in the short to medium term, it looks like. So now let's go ahead and put those two cars side by side and see how the pricing shakes out. So I'll take all the trims available for the Tesla Model Y and put them head to head to what the Blazer EV has available now. Uh, one of the things about uh, car makers, uh, and this is very important to sort of think about and look in the past, they'll tell you they're coming out with different trims over time, but sometimes they don't come to fruition because they'll say there's not enough demand. This, everybody has done this, Tesla, GM, Ford. <laughs> it's it's uh, sort of, there's a long tail and a wait for waiting when these trims are gonna come out. Uh, and it's mostly due to how quickly they can get product ramped up. But this is what the pricing looks looks like. And I have it sorted from cheapest to most expensive between the Model Y trims and the Chevy Blazer trims. 
And so hopefully you can see from this chart some of the gaps that are appearing from GM's perspective as far as pricing goes and the feature set that you get for that initial car. It's going to be very interesting to track how GM is going to sort of uh, transition into this new way of selling EVs, especially sending these cars to dealers. And they are having basically control over how much you pay. But a few trends are appearing just from this chart. And really the two biggest takeaways I have, and of course, you can go back and pause the chart to really look at what I'm talking about here. The very first one is that the most expensive Model Y is cheaper than the cheapest Blazer available by about $2,000. So you can buy a Model Y uh, Performance with about 300 miles of range and all wheel drive. And that's gonna be about $2,000 cheaper than the lowest trim available today Blazer, which is gonna be a 279 mile range, all wheel drive non-performance for $56,000. And the second big takeaway here is that the Tesla Model Y long range all wheel drive is $11,000 cheaper and with 10 more miles of range than the longest range Blazer with real wheel drive. And this sort of highlights a big gap, I believe, as it pertains to Chevy and GM and how they can price their products. You have the company with the biggest scale, uh, the biggest, really the best ability to uh, uh, have pricing power and really uh, offer their products at a very good price for what you get versus a legacy automaker that's building a lot of cars, but they're building a lot of gas cars and not a lot of EVs. And so if you take that comparison and put it side by side, you can see that even though GM is building a ton of cars, it doesn't seem like they're able to offer an EV that's uh, of comparable price versus, uh, say, a Tesla. $11,000 more for less range and uh, less drive units. And the last point to take away here, which in my opinion is really the biggest one, at these much lower prices, a Tesla Model Y is profitable while the Chevy Blazer EV will not be profitable. Now, GM doesn't show how much they make or lose on their EV specifically, but we can look at Ford, which is a very similar company to how GM is run from that perspective. And Ford is losing about 60% margin, so negative 50% margin on their vehicles, whereas Tesla is making money on their, on their EV uh, business. So then you have to ask yourself, why is GM pricing the Blazer EV at these levels? Are they trying to position themselves as a high quality product, as a more luxurious brand? Or is it more that they're just not capable of offering an EV that's truly affordable? Or are they pricing it higher knowing that there's gonna be more demand in the short term for their vehicles and then they'll continue lowering the prices long term? I would love to hear your thoughts about this dynamic. I was expecting these trims to be much cheaper than they are now. Ford took a lot of steps to lower the pricing for the Mustang Mach-E and make it as price competitive as possible, especially against the Tesla Model Y. Uh, and they almost had to because if you look at a lot of the reports, there's a lot of Mustang Mach-E sitting, sitting on dealer lots uh, with more than 100 days of supply on hand, even with the auto market seemingly okay, at least in the United States. So I'm curious why Chevy decided to price their Blazer so so high, I, I am actually quite quite surprised. But in other ways, if you've been following the EV story closely, one of the theories is that legacy automakers are not going to be able to really compete with the likes of say a Tesla or even a Rivian that have built their companies from scratch to make electric vehicles. And because they have to carry along all the gas business along with them and all those factories, and the fact that they've never really built an EV in the past that's affordable, that a lot of that expertise will not be transferable over to the EV side. So, and that's why they can't offer something that's cheaper, you know? So, and I think that's where I land. I think that's where I'm at right now is that it's becoming painfully clear that GM, Ford and others from a pricing perspective, they're gonna really struggle to compete with the likes of Tesla. And as we go further and further into the EV car market and more and more brands try to really come out with affordable vehicles, uh, it might be that you have one player that just has all the pricing power because they've spent the last 10 years building out their brand and their supply chain, whereas with GM and Ford simply will not be able to keep up. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Don't let me, <laughs> what I just said, sway your opinion. Definitely let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. 
and let me know if you found this content informative and helpful. And if you did, I would love it if you like this video. And just a real quick piece of data, which I think is very interesting. A lot of you that watch the videos, so of course, thank you so much for always watching my videos and I really, really appreciate it. Looks like about half, about 50% of you guys are subscribed. So just in case you wanted to subscribe and you're watching my videos often, I would love it. That helps the YouTube algorithm sort of tailor uh, my videos a little bit better for people that actually want to watch them. So this helps the algorithm sort of throw these videos to people that will actually enjoy them. So thank you so much for doing that. And lastly, if you want to support the channel, links to Athletic Greens, uh, which is a supplement I take every single morning, and to my merch in the description below. I'm going to leave you with a little video uh, that I've taken. We're doing a lot of traveling those last couple of days, and we're in California today. Uh, and we drove up to Joshua Tree, and then the wife had to step out and take some pictures, and I took a little video while we are out there. So enjoy some of the scenes we've been looking at these last couple of days, and hope to see you on the next one. Take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye. How freaking stunning is this? Gorgeous.